One of the most challenging aspects of building an interactive app is controlling the flow of data. That's why you might often hear developers debate over best practices around state management. And while Flutter and Firebase both provide some awesome tools to work with reactive real-time data, it's still not easy. In today's video, I want to show you some of my favorite patterns for apps that have complex data flow needs with things like Firebase Auth and Firestore. And I'm especially excited to show you how a library called Provider can dramatically reduce the complexity of your code. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and you can find the full source code on Fireship.io. And I should also mention that I just recently released my own Flutter app on iOS and Android that allows you to take quizzes along with my YouTube videos, as well as my full Flutter course, which was just released a couple days ago. Part of the course is free, but consider becoming a pro member to get the full experience. Now, when it comes to state management with Flutter and Firebase, I've tried a whole bunch of different approaches. And there are a lot of different solutions that work, so it often just comes down to the developer's preference. So let me give you an idea of some of the things that I really value on the subject. First, I want a good separation of concerns from the business logic and presentation logic. In other words, I don't want to have a whole bunch of logic related to the retrieval of data embedded somewhere in the widget tree. The second thing I value is being able to share data easily throughout the widget tree. I might need to access my Firebase user in 10 different screens, and I definitely don't want to be listening to a stream manually in 10 different stateful widgets. And third, I like to try to avoid boilerplate code. There's a lot of really good and popular state management solutions out there, but they tend to require a lot of configuration. And in most cases, I just prefer to have simple conventions over explicit configuration. Now, the provider package for Flutter does a really good job of meeting my needs in all three of these areas. And all it really does is provide syntactic sugar for inherited widget, as well as some other low-level building blocks in Flutter like Stream Builder and Change Notifier. It allows you to expose a value, or as we'll see in this video, a stream, and then access the value in any of the descendant widgets. As simple as that sounds, it actually leads to some very profound benefits, especially when you need to compose multiple streams together, for example, the Firebase user with some related data in the database. We can demonstrate that in the simple demo app where the user logs in, and then they can create a record in the database related to their user ID. And then they can add additional documents in a subcollection to that root document. Now, before we get into the actual source code, I wanna first show you some of the challenges that you might face when working with Firebase and Flutter. So Firebase exposes streams for both user authentication and Firestore. And the most painful way to manage those streams is manually in your own stateful widget. So first of all, we have quite a bit of boilerplate here just to get the stateful widget set up. And then we need to set a property for the stream subscription and then also the data that we eventually want to show in the UI. When the widget is first initialized, we'll go ahead and subscribe to our stream and then we'll call set state to update the data whenever it emits a new value. This is a stream to read data from Firestore, so it could cost money and it could also be sending a lot of data downstream. So we need to make sure to dispose of it when this widget is no longer needed. That means we need to call subscription cancel in our dispose lifecycle hook. Now finally, we can go down here to our build method and display the data. And notice how we're using bracket notation to call the title key on a map. So this data is dynamic, but the text widget requires a string as its argument. So if the database returns null, then our text widget is going to fail. So we have no type safety here, and Dart is not very forgiving when it comes to types because it does runtime type checking. Now we can already make a huge improvement to this code by refactoring everything into a stream builder. So this time you can see here I have a stateless widget, and now I'm going to wrap our code in the stream builder. And just a side note, you can always do that with the refactor tool in VS Code, which is a huge time saver. Now the stream builder widget takes a stream as its argument and it will automatically subscribe to the stream then give us access to the data inside this builder function. In addition, it will cancel the subscription automatically when this widget is removed from the tree. Now we still don't have any type safety on the data payload. So oftentimes what you'll do is use double question marks here to make sure that it always returns a default value with the proper type. Stream builder is awesome, but what if we also need access to the user inside of the build method? That's also a stream, so what we'll most likely do is wrap this in another stream builder. Although we could map everything together into a single stream, but that's also not exactly easy. As your app becomes more complex, you might need the data from multiple streams at the same time, and you might have one stream that depends on another stream. It's very common for a Firestore document read to depend on the currently logged in user stream. And then you might need that data in a deeply nested widget, and the only way to get that data down is to pass the properties down through all the children. So now that we have a good understanding of the problem, let's take a look at how Provider solves it. If you remember, I mentioned earlier that Provider is syntactic sugar for inherited widget. So that means we can use it the same way we might use a theme in Flutter. 
where we set up our data at one point and then we use it in a child and that child will look up the widget tree until it finds the first instance of that type and use that as the data source. Now we're only going to be focused on streams in this video because that's the way Firebase returns real-time data, but keep in mind provider can also handle just regular values in your app. As you can see here, I'm in the root of the application and I'm going to wrap my material app in a multi-provider. Multi-provider is really convenient because it allows you to set up multiple streams or multiple values and then share them without having to nest widgets. You just add all the values you wanna share into a list. One thing you might wanna do if you use Firebase authentication is observe the current user throughout the entire application. We can do that by setting up a stream provider here and you'll notice that it's typed to the Firebase user type which comes from Firebase. And then we pass it the stream that actually contains that data. Now the real magic of this approach is that we can now treat the Firebase user as if it were a synchronous value throughout the entire app. If we go down here to the stateless widget, we can just access the user directly inside the build method by calling provider of context with the Firebase user type. So now anytime we want to access the user, we can do it with a single line of code without needing to set up a stream builder. So we can determine if the user is logged in or not by seeing if the user object is null. And then I wanna take a second here to show you a cool trick in Dart 2.3. You'll notice we're using conditional logic directly in the children list for the column. And then we can also combine this with the new spread syntax to create a partial list that will only be visible to the logged in user. So basically we're saying if the user is logged in, show this list of widgets, but if the user is not logged in, show this list of widgets. So it's both concise and readable. And that already gives us a fully functioning authentication system. The user logs in and the app automatically reacts because that widget that depends on the user from the provider will re-render when it emits a new value. So it makes user authentication just work like magic, but it's a little more tricky when we start talking about Firestore because Firestore always returns data as a map. And unlike TypeScript, we can't just apply an interface to a map in Dart. So that means we need a way to deserialize our data from a map into an actual Dart class. So what we'll do here is just define a couple of classes that define the shape of the data. This is going to benefit us in several ways. It's going to give us IntelliSense when we're actually working with these data models in our code. And it's also going to ensure that we have appropriate defaults with the proper data type. Like I mentioned before, if you pass a text widget, anything other than a string, it's going to fail. But writing a data model like this will help you alleviate that problem and give you a single source of truth to manage it. Right now we just have two immutable classes that do nothing more than instantiate some properties. But what I want to show you now is how to deserialize this data from either a map or a Firestore document. When you use a map it's a little more flexible because you can also use it to deserialize regular JSON data or some other data source like maybe from Dart HTTP. This from map constructor will take the map that we get from Firestore as its argument, then it will simply take the values on that map and set them as properties on this class. And we can also use double question marks here to set some default values. Now this process is kind of tedious, but it does give your data a strong schema and it makes working with data in your widgets a lot more user friendly. Mostly because you have IntelliSense on everything and you have some confidence that you're going to be passing the right data types to your widgets at runtime. If you want to make your constructor a little more specialized, you might name it from Firestore and instead pass it the document snapshot. This way you have access to the document ID, which can be useful when working with collections because you don't automatically have the ID in the return data. But the drawback here is that your constructor is now more specialized, so it wouldn't work with other things like just plain JSON. And just to make this clear, your data model should match what you have in Firestore. So here we have a hit points value, which is a number, and then a couple of strings. So the data model is only responsible for creating an instance with the proper data shape. What we'll do now is define a database service, which is responsible for the actual business logic of retrieving these items from the database and deserializing them to the appropriate class. This is just a plain Dart class, and I would recommend keeping this class stateless and have it focus on exposing methods that return data to you. For example, if we want to get one of the hero documents typed to the superhero class, we can make a reference to the hero's collection with the document ID, and then we can return a superhero instance with the from map constructor with the snapshot data. Now, when we perform this read from the database, instead of getting a dynamic map, we'll get an actual class instance of superhero. But we actually want to listen to this document as a real-time stream. So we'll use the map operator on a stream to map that to an instance of the superhero. Now we can also do this with a list. For example, we want to make a query to Firestore for a list of weapon documents. This code is a little more challenging because we're being returned with a list of snapshots. Then we need to take that list and then map each item in the list down to the instance that we want, which is a weapon. 
Now, I'd recommend doing other things in your database service as well, like performing writes to the database. But the general idea here is that you're taking all of the business logic of working with the database outside of your widget tree. Now that we have all this setup done, we can see the true power of provider in our code. Now we already have access to the current user in our widget, so we can easily use it to create related streams by simply passing that value as an argument to our database service. For this part of the UI, I'm just using Stream Builder, so that's still super convenient. And in this case, it will give us access to the hero document that's related to that user ID. But with the provider package, we can also use a stream provider elsewhere in the widget tree. This is especially useful if you have your widgets broken down into a lot of small pieces of UI, because it means you can use your data in all of those widgets without having to pass in the properties manually. And you also don't have to create any additional stream builders or subscriptions to the stream. All the data is just there and ready for you to use. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want to go into even more advanced concepts than this, consider enrolling in the full course on Fireship IL. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.